Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. You probably can play the arpeggios of the song you want to improvise over and you know what scales go with them, but it's still difficult to make a really great solo with this material. In this video, I'm going to show you a solo that I've written over a 12 bar blues in B flat. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what I'm playing, but I'm mostly going to talk about how I'm connecting the different phrases. Because to me, what makes the difference between a great solo and an okay solo is really how much the solo sounds like a musical whole. So the idea is that if you want to be able to improvise a better solo, then you also want to work on being better at writing and composing a better solo. Let's check out how the solo sounds. <laughs> If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, improve your soloing and check out some interesting chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. In this video, I'm mostly talking about how you're connecting the different phrases and I'm not really going to go over what the arpeggios are and what the scales are that you need to play over a blues in B flat. But if you do want to refresh that or check that out, then I do have a video that's covering that and I'll link to that in the description and also in a card somewhere on the screen. If we listen to the first two bars of the solo, then it's kind of clear that that's using a motif. So it's really just a statement and then I'm developing that statement to fit it to the next chord. So on the B flat seven, we get the initial statement, which is... And then I'm repeating that, but I need to move it and I also want to just make it fit uh, on the next chord, the E flat seven. And there I'm doing, so the first one's kind of coming out of the B flat major triad. And the second part is coming out of a, a G diminished triad, so... But it's pretty much the same melody. And I could, of course, when I go back to the B flat 7 in bar 3, I could have continued with that and gone... But then that's too much the same rhythm and it, it gets too predictable. So here I'm sort of going with another rhythm and then just continuing uh, on notes that are close to where I'm ending. So I'm going to the A flat. And then I have a new statement, I make a pickup, and then I'm actually just repeating that statement. But now I want to fit it so that I get a flat 9 because I want to pull the B flat 7 towards the E flat in uh, bar 5. So then I'm changing the top note, the top B flat, into a B, and then we get. And then that pulls us to, uh, to E flat 7. Bar 5 and 6 is also using a really common device. Uh, because I'm moving from E flat 7 to E diminished and really I'm just playing a small melody on the E flat 7 and then I'm just altering that by changing the E flat into an E to get a melody on the E diminished. So that sounds like this. And what you can hear is that I'm not only changing the E but I'm also changing the ending of that phrase because I want to move the melody forward back to the B flat and I also just don't want to play the same motif too close to each other all the time because that gets really boring. Going back to the B flat seven, I start a phrase that's actually moving across four bars. So uh, we're coming out with the leading note E and then up to the fifth on the one on the B flat seven. And here I'm just moving chromatically up to the seventh. So, so really this is just chromaticism and arpeggio notes and then down the arpeggio down to the third. And then I'm repeating that idea exactly uh, on uh, the G seven. So first the leading note to the fifth and then chromaticism, and then down the arpeggio to the third again. And I want to use this motif one more time on the C minor seven, but now I really have to change it because otherwise it's going to get too predictable and too boring. So I use first an A flat leading note, and then down to the fifth, so G, and then again chromatically up to the seventh, and then a completely different line, which is just sort of a basic C minor line uh, coming out of the C minor triad. So. And then I want to conclude that on the F7 altered, uh, just using something else and really just taking it somewhere else not to get stuck in the motif because, again, you don't want to stick too much with the same motif without developing it. And this way of playing something completely else can really work as an as a ending to a sentence. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm basically just playing an ascending E flat minor 7, uh, yeah, E flat minor 7 flat 5 arpeggio.
the final turnaround is just a B flat seven arpeggio played from the fifth descending. So, and then I'm really just repeating two notes of that arpeggio. So I'm kind of using the ending of the last melodic statement as a pickup for the next one. So, which is again also essentially just a descending arpeggio on the C minor. And then I'm skipping up to the seventh of F7 and then just through the flat nine down to the fifth on the B flat in the next chorus. The idea of using composition and composing as a way of teaching and practicing improvisation is something that I don't see used that often. Uh, but for me personally, I find that it's a really good way of working. And it's not that I'm the only one who does this, because if you go to a Barry Harris workshop, you'll see that he also really spends the workshop composing solos and talking about the different ideas and devices that he's using while coming up with a solo. And that's really how he teaches what he does. So I'm kind of curious, what do you think? Do you work with composition or are you just improvising over backing tracks or with a metronome when you're practicing? Uh, let me know in the comments because I think it's an interesting thing to talk a little bit about. Also because I think it could be a really powerful tool for you if you're not using it already. If you want to check out some more ideas that you can use on a 12 bar blues, then check out this video where I'm talking about nine different pentatonic scale ideas that you can use, quite a few different sounds and colors that are maybe a little bit different than what you're used to when you're soloing over the blues. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and you like this video, then uh, subscribe to my channel. These are the kind of videos that I publish here every week. And if you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page and join us over on Patreon. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and until next week.